in this century, water is going to be the next oil. Everyone needs to cooperate. Everybody needs to know that water is finite. I've been very, very concerned about the crisis, uh, the impending crisis that we're uh, facing regarding water issues globally, nationally and globally. Just um, give you why we are in that situation. Uh, first of all, we have an expanding population, world population, so the needs are bigger. Uh, we have just very simply also an aging infrastructure which we haven't uh, invested in recently. But more seriously, more dramatically, we are experiencing severe climate change. The wet areas are getting wetter, the dry areas are getting drier. In uh, 2012, we had a very severe drought. 60, in the United States, 60% of the maize cultivated in the United States in 2012 was killed by drought. The Colorado River is so low nowadays that there are predictions that the Hoover Dam will not be able to supply electricity to the Los Angeles area, which it now does. Globally, of course, there are huge amounts of um, uh, huge areas that suffer from malnutrition and, large, and from polluted water. Two million kids per year die because of um, water-related diseases, waterborne diseases. So we really need to do something. Business as usual cannot continue, and we need to try to find solutions. So there are multiple avenues we can do. The first one that one could do, the simplest one, is conservation. So we need to watch out for how we use water, uh, both in our urban lives uh, and in industrial lives, but in particular in agriculture. Agriculture consumes 70% of the water globally. Sprinklers, sprinkling farms and so on, spending water is not effective because, especially in hot areas which needs the water most, because the water evaporates before it ever gets to the roots. So, you can implement technique that was developed in Israel about 50 years ago, now implemented in 30 countries worldwide, which has revolutionized uh, agriculture, and that is the drop-to-crop uh, practice, whereby long tubes are put in the ground with strategic holes where the plants are going to be planted each year and water is delivered directly to the root, to the plant. And this conserves water. It doesn't have major capital investments so that it can be applied in developing countries. There are other conservation measures that one can do and one that has been used amply in the United States, less so in Europe, is genomic modifications. You can modify plants to resist drought. It turns out that the original uh, protein that was de devised to protect plants from freezing also protects plants from drought. So they've now incorporated this Bacillus subtilis gene in corn and it does protect the plant a lot from uh, drought. In the United States, almost all the soy and the corn has been modified genetically. We need to educate uh, not only children, but adult population to realize what is at stake. A 10 minute shower is inexcusable. <laughs> it is no longer the case that you can just assume water is a free resource, it's available for anybody to use whenever they want and as much as they want. We need new water, we need more fresh water. The amount of fresh water in the world is only 3% and 2% is locked up in the ice caps. So we need more fresh water. So what do you do? There are two major things that we can do. One is desalination. Let me say that um, energy and water are very closely related. You need energy to get desalinate water. You need water to produce hydroelectric power. So the energy and water nexus are very delicate balance and we need to try to maximize each. Um, in desalination, much progress has been made. Reverse osmosis is the 
name of the game in, for desalination. In just a few years, by 2016, we're going to need upwards of 38 billion cubic meters of water per year. So uh, desalination is very, very important. The other big use is reusing and recycling urban wastewater. Uh, urban wastewater, the, the most advanced and the most extensive work so far in that regard has been done in Israel. They recycle over 80% of this municipal water gets purified, well first surge purification, but after that it goes into further microfiltration and further reverse osmosis and then it's piped into the southern part of the country, the Negev, where they use it for agriculture. And they have, in fact, turned it, the south the desert into great agricultural land. Clearly, we need to do a lot of work and people need to become aware that we really have a water crisis. Water is finite and very limited, and fresh water, that is, and the population is growing and also, we hope rising to middle class status as the socioeconomic level goes up, the demands for water will get higher. Now, what we need to do is educate people to realize that both they need to curb their energy demands, uh, from encourage biofuel development that doesn't use uh, land and water, and specifically point out to the fact that. Um, you know, recycling and desalination takes energy. And so we need to realize that there's a nexus and a balance. We need to educate in both energy demand and uh, water use. I'm an optimist and I believe in human ingenuity. And I think that given a real crisis, we can come up with ways to solve it. Unfortunately, we're not going to really get into it until the crisis is here. We usually operate most effectively when there is an impending crisis. Um, but I believe that uh, a, a given an educational effort for everyone to understand just how serious it is and what is happening, um, that we will come up with solutions. I mean, if the Hoover Dam stops supplying electricity to Los Angeles, we will know what we have to do. But I hope we can come across and solve those issues beforehand.